It's the first time uh, I seen my girl Zula digging. And she digging. What you digging for, Zula? Huh, mama? Why you digging that big old hole? You a bad girl. What's going down, Thunders and Thunderettes? We got a video coming to you guys. And um, the main reason I wanted to make it was because uh, we got, it's a Facebook group with uh, breeders and uh, things like that for bearded dragons. And I wanted to talk about bearded dragons being arboreal, semi-arboreal, and also I wanted to go over some things about the bioactive enclosure. Um, if you have many dwarf whites, springtails, and maybe some powdered blues inside of your bioactive setup, people say they worry about the bearded dragon eating those bugs. And uh, also getting uh, impacted from the bioactive substrate. Um, with that being said, if your bioactive setup is uh, perfect, and you have those um, that cleanup crew that I just described, you will never see those bugs in the daytime unless you lift up a water bowl. If you lift up a water bowl, you will see um, the isopods and the springtails because they kind of congregate un underneath the water bowl because of the moisture. The rest of the enclosure, um, they don't fool with it until I water the plants at night. And um, my rosemary dye, it doesn't work in the back or the front, up front or back. And so I went and got some English time um, for E-Ray's tank. But anyway, as you can see, both of these dragons, and I picked the right time to record, both of these dragons use their wood fake log going across and they use their vines. E-Ray will sometime, he will go hop up on his uh, hammock, climb on this vine, go up and then up that way. Or sometime he'll go over the bridge, he'll hop on his, uh, that log back there onto the bridge and then the little fake log. But um, they do climb a lot. Um, E-Ray, he's been climbing since a baby. Azula's four months old. She uses her hammock, her hammock couch. Um, this thing, she goes up here at night, and so does E-Ray, he goes up here at night. Sometimes she'll go sleep up there at night on this brown vine. So they do climb a lot, and when I come in here, she's running, jumping over here, digging holes back there. Uh, she digs a lot of holes inside her cave. see a little bit um, she digs down in the front also today I found her I found Azula in this hole right here as you can see this hole she dug this hole and she was inside of that hole right there I have a picture at the beginning of the video and you'll see it she's hard to spot but you can see her and she she goes in that hole and uh, she be chilling in that hole but um Anyway, long as you have your bioactive tank enclosure set up the proper way with the springtails and the isopods, your bearded dragon will be fine and um, they won't go after the bugs. Like I say, underneath this water dish, not this one because it just got there, but oh yeah, there go a mealworm that turned into a beetle. But anyway, None of those bugs come out in the daytime because it's hot. I keep it at about 107 on the hot side. Um, 120, I think 122 on the basking spot. And uh, this side around 86 to 80 degrees on the cool side. And um, it, works, it, it works well. So if you do a bioactive setup, Make sure you um, use mostly topsoil, 75 to 80%. And the reason I say that, if you go 
on YouTube and you search bearded dragons in the wild, you will see that most of them live, they live in wooded areas. And the ground looks like this. Only thing, only difference is all uh, the moss that I added, the sphagnum moss and the um, reindeer moss, that's the only difference. And um, the leaves, it's, it's, a lot, it's a lot of leaves on that video. And the only difference is that moss and the reason why I don't want my dragon's white underside to become filthy. But this is my boy E-Ray. He loves his enclosure. And so does uh, Azula. Look at this guy's thigh, thigh muscles. Like, if you give them something to climb on, they will climb on it. This dude has some of the biggest thigh muscles I've ever seen on a bearded dragon. And uh, he's only nine months old. And he's already almost 400 grams. You know what I'm saying? At 21 inches long. This dude is pretty big. And uh, most dragons don't even get 20 inches. And they thigh muscles will not look like this. This is because of my setup. And uh, you can go back and look at my first videos. I had them on towel. Um, she, Azula, she never was on towel. She was on grout. And um, I did the grout bottom because it's rough enough to help them shed. And also, that's something else too. Your birdie dragon does not need help with shed. If you have the right products and the right furniture inside of your terrarium they can get the shed off their self you'll see them scratching against this rubbing against this uh grinding on the brick and they'll get the shed off on their own but um something else people was talking about on the facebook group they were saying my dragons uh there's too much stuff inside of my dragon's enclosure anyway you can see this ground more than half of the ground they can walk on. They can walk on all this. They even climb up on these. That's just like a hide in the middle of a tank that most breeders use. But they try to say it's not enough room, but honestly, man, they have plenty of space to walk. Like, this is a four by two. This ain't, this ain't no, uh, this ain't no uh, 40 gallon breeder tank. This is a four by two. He has all this room to walk in. This up front is more room than a 40 gallon breeder. And that's facts as far as the length. You know what I'm saying? And then he has all of this back here to walk on. That, that camouflage thing, that's rice inside of a, a bandana to bring down the humidity. Um, the temp is down right now because I've been down here with the doors open and the garage was open and it's pretty windy out here. Hers is at 102. Heat does rise. But like I say, you get the right cleanup crew, ISO pods, um, the miniature dwarf whites, powder blues, you will never see them in the daytime. Your bearded dragon won't even try to eat anything off this ground. Matter of fact, there goes some poop. And it's crazy because that's why I love the bioactive. You don't have to clean up poop. That poop will be completely gone in two to three days. Like, I come down here, I don't see no poop. If you do see it, it's gonna be something like that and almost gone. But uh, this plant, I have some orange um, dwarf, I have some oranges and some powdered blues up here. And I guarantee we will not spot any of them. And it's a lot, it's a lot of cleanup crew in this uh, terrarium, it's a lot. Like even when I pick up that leaf, uh, you might see some springtails, maybe, but you will not see those bugs. Those bugs are tucked away under stuff. And uh, most of them are probably back there with those plants and underneath that water bowl. But yeah, man, you can do the bioactive setup. It's great. And uh, let me get this out of here. It's great. And as um, long as you have the right cleanup crew, and the right plants. You don't even need a plant, matter of fact, because of the poop. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the cleanup crew will eat the poop. But this is dry up here, up front. It's dry. It's mostly topsoil, um, reptile soil, and uh, coconut husk. 
but um it's dry up front and then the moisture is back with the plants and so i'm gonna leave the english time back there and that's it you know what i'm saying and it's a go but as you can see man my dragons they climb they use their stuff and that's facts people always try to make fun of it and say oh man you got too much stuff in there Yada 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 yada. Shut your ass up. You don't know what the hell you talking about. A lot of people leave their birdie dragons in a box with nothing in it but a hide and some some bowls. You know what I'm saying? How would you feel if somebody put you in a jail cell with a toilet and bed? Like, come on now. My birdie dragons are way more active than they ever been. You know what I'm saying? E Ray, man, he explores the hell out of that thing. Azula explores the hell out of that tank. They sit around and chill for a little bit, but they explore a lot. Anyway, man, it's an educational video on bioactive and um, bearded dragons being semi-arboreal. But information, information, man. You can't just get information from one source and leave it at that with these bearded dragons. But other than that, man, y'all be sure to thrash the like, pound the subscribe, and uh, let me know what y'all think about these enclosures in the comments. Pagona out.